Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chair Gensler, you say Howie is clear, but let me tell you what's not clear. What's not clear is what the rules of the road are if you're in the, in the crypto business. Over the past several years, the SEC has brought approximately 150 enforcement actions related to the digital asset ecosystem. In 2023 alone, the SEC brought nearly 50, up from 53% from 2022. Let me read a description uh, of what uh, your agency is doing to one particular company, Coinbase. Today's Wells Notice does not provide a lot of information for us to respond to. The SEC staff told us that they have identified potential violations of securities law, but little more. We asked the SEC specifically to identify which assets on our platforms they believe may be securities, and they declined to do so. Today's Wells Notice also comes after Coinbase provided multiple proposals to the SEC about registration over the course of months, all of which the SEC ultimately refused to respond to. So Coinbase repeatedly, 30 times, tried to come in and register with the SEC, and the SEC refused to respond. They then submitted a petition for a rulemaking, which was rebuked, which was completely ignored. Then the SEC identified potential violations in a Wells notice, but refused to identify what those were. Howie, in your mind, is very clear. What participants in the crypto space uh, are telling us is that this is totally unclear. Commissioner Peirce, is this moving target, is this lawlessness by the commission conducive to investor protection? No, it's not. Chair Gensler, I think um, we need not only Fit 21, but we need an SEC that actually establishes rules so that everybody knows what they are and enforces those rules instead of making everything a moving target and refusing to respond to requests from investors and providers of crypto assets what those rules are. But I, I, wanna, I wanna move to another question really quickly. Um, over and over again, um, your administrative actions have been invalidated by the courts. And we've seen it in the proxy advisory rule, the private funds disclosure rule, the debt box example, the stock buyback rule, grayscale ripple. Over and over and over and over again, your administrative actions have been uh, struck down in federal court. Um, Commissioner Peirce, what does this say about the legitimacy and reputation of the SEC when the agency is constantly losing in federal court? Well, it certainly says we need to be a little more careful when we go out with proposals uh, and when we take actions to make sure that we're acting within the constraints that Congress gave us. And these are things that, in, in many of these instances, private fund rule, uh, advisor rule, for example, we knew ahead of time that there were, there were legal questions about whether we had the authority to do what we did, but we moved forward, and this is not good for our institutional integrity. Well, it's in administrative law fouls, violation of the APA, arbitrary and capricious actions, but let's go to the basics. The basics is statutory authority, and now we have West Virginia versus EPA and a Loper Bright overturning Chevron. In light of those decisions, uh, Commissioner, um, uh, um, can you identify any specific statutory authority, uh, Commissioner Peirce, can you identify any specific statutory authority where Congress has granted the SEC authority to promulgate regulations that compel companies to disclose general and immaterial information about environmental or social issues? As I pointed out in connection with the climate rule, I, I'm very concerned about moving beyond materiality. I, I think that we are on shaky um, legal ground when we move away from financial materiality, which is the touchstone of our Well, is there any statutory authority at all, specific statutory authority? There are instances where Congress has told us specifically conflict minerals, for example, where we want you to go and do something regardless of the materiality. Well, let me ask you this. Our colleagues, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, Mr. Kasten and Mr. Vargas, introduced the Climate Risk Disclosure Act in the 116th Congress, and then the House passed a, a, a version of that in the 117th Congress, Representative Vargas's Corporate Governance Improvement Investor Protection Act. Those, those pieces of legislation, to their credit, to my colleagues' credit, attempted to confer specific statutory authority to the commission to do what you did in the climate disclosure rule. But guess what? The Senate didn't pass those laws. The fact that this body has proposed statutory authority but 
specifically declined to enact it into law, what does that say about the SEC's authority to promulgate the climate disclosure rule? Again, our baseline is, is materiality. If Congress wants us to do something in immaterial disclosures, then they can tell us to do that. Point is, we haven't done it. You don't have the authority to do it. I yield back. Uh, the general, uh, gentleman yields.